Hobbs, Yolanda Foster, one of the stars of the hit TV show The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. She's been suffering from Lyme disease for two years. Why don't we have proper diagnostics? Why don't we have a cure? These are just some of the medicines I use in two and a half years. The worst part of this battle definitely was a treatment. I turned to my husband and I said to him, baby, take a good look at me right now because I'm going to die. Lyme is a bacteria, it's a particular kind of bacteria. It's a spirochete, and it's one of the more complex bacteria known to man. We know that Lyme disease came to the forefront during the late 70s when children in Connecticut started to develop a very strange rheumatologic type disorder. This is such a public health crisis. We need to figure this out. It's not just a United States illness. This is a global illness. Lyme disease is one of the United States' fastest growing infectious diseases. Tick-borne diseases have been reported in every state as well as in 80 countries. The CDC reports 329,000 Americans will be diagnosed with Lyme disease in 2015 alone. That's more than HIV and breast cancer combined. And thousands more will go undiagnosed. That's a lot of people. And children, you know, who are being taxed, and very often those symptoms uh, can be fatigue, lack of concentration. And so all of these things tend to build upon one another. And so Lyme disease, I think that it, it can impact children, and especially as they're going through school. Children between the ages of 3 and 14 are at the highest risk of contracting Lyme disease. <laughs> Hi, my name is Zoe. I'm eight years old. I like to do horseback riding. I like to eat pasta. I like to look for bugs. I like to climb trees. I wish I never had Lyme disease because I couldn't do a lot of the stuff I like to do. I had to go to the doctors all the time. I had to give them a lot of blood. I felt tired and dizzy. I didn't feel hungry at all. I lost my appetite. I couldn't fall asleep, which is still happening. In school, I had a hard time paying attention to what I was learning when the teachers were talking. And I passed out in kindergarten at school. And I couldn't get back up. Parents are worried about Lyme disease. And I have a number of parents who come in who they themselves have had Lyme disease and therefore they're obviously and very understandably worried that their child might have it. Oh, hi. First you're gonna check your belly. Diagnostics for Lyme are tough. And part of that is that the, the testing that we have available leaves a great deal to be desired. Studies show commonly used testing misses 50% of positive Lyme cases. It takes the average Lyme patient two years and five doctor's visits to get diagnosed. I was bit by a tick when I was seven years old and misdiagnosed for over 11 years. I've battled through Lyme disease for over 22 years. It's amazing how one tiny little insect can take away a person's life and just give you a really dull, dismal quality of life. And if there was just one little test that was so easy. Global Lyme Alliance is funding top tier research that will yield reliable diagnostic tests, more effective treatments, and help educate doctors and the public about complex tick-borne illnesses. The answers are steeped in fact and science. And we know it's important that we partner with the most credible institutions around the country to help us find these answers. Global Lyme Alliance Research Division has grown over the last decade. 
projects have become much more sophisticated. And the work that's come out of funding from the Global Lyme Alliance is absolutely astonishing. One of Global Lyme Alliance's most prolific researchers, Dr. Kim Lewis, is at Northeastern. He is the director of the Antimicrobial Discovery Center. He, along with a team of about 15, are working to crack the mystery behind the persistent infection in Lyme disease. We started looking at, okay, so here's a very tough pathogen, but does it have vulnerabilities that we could attack? We found that Borrelia burgdorferi is highly susceptible to DNA damaging agents, and the pathogen lives apparently under microaerophilic conditions, meaning at conditions of low oxygen. Uh, we just started the project of uh, drug discovery against Lyme disease, and that, of course, requires a lot of resources. And the donors have done a tremendous amount to really catapult this field forward. Government funding for Lyme disease research is extremely limited and becoming more difficult to obtain. There's plenty of smart people out there that would love to work on this. You put a top-notch researcher on a project, he wants to solve it. We do not have a deficiency of ideas to follow. The only limiting factor in our moving forward uh, is resources resources to move faster and bring cures to treat Lyme disease. This is something that it has to happen. It has to happen. We have to save lives here, especially for those little kids. I want to tell scientists that they should work very, very hard to find a cure for kids so they don't have to suffer from Lyme disease, so they don't have to go through what I went through.